You're watching CCN, Clarksville Community Network, produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. I'm uh, Michelle. I'm Chief Flight Nurse at, here at Life Flight 3 in Clarksville. I started flying, this is my 20th year of flying, 30th year of being a nurse. I have almost 1,300 patient transports. And I started flying because actually our program manager, Jeannie Yateman, flew into a small hospital I was working at, into the emergency department. And I was so impressed with her, I thought, I want to do that. So it took me 10 years, but I finally got everything that I needed. Um, went through some grueling interviews, and they finally took a chance on me. I had my first child very young. My labor and delivery nurse was awesome, and I thought that's what I want to do with my life. Worked at a small hospital in labor and delivery, and eventually those doctors just kind of windled away with the healthcare reform and things like that. A lot of doctors stopped practicing labor and delivery for liability reasons. So at that time they started pulling me to the emergency department and that's where I started off in my emergency nursing career. Well in a helicopter you don't have a lot of space. Our medical director compares it to functioning in a bathtub with a very critical patient. So if you can picture that, that's kind of how we deal with things. We have a lot of autonomy. I love that part about it. So our knowledge base is to where we can make decisions and not have to have a physician there telling us what to do. We have protocols and then we have autonomy to make our own decisions. The 145, she's our baby. We love her but we do have a variety of different aircraft in our program. We have 145, 135s, and 130s. The smaller the aircraft is, the more turbulence you get. So 145 on a windy day, it's just like a blow, like a soft blow. You get into a 135 with the same wind and you can really feel it. Although the pilots like to fly the 135 more than the 145. This is the Cadillac, 135 is the sports car. We work 24 and a 12, so it's a 36 hour week for us. Uh, the 12 hours we call princess shifts because basically that's what they are for us. Sometimes we come in and on a 24 hour shift, you can start flying at the beginning of your shift and not stop till the next morning. Those are very challenging shifts for us. Uh, usually that takes be four to five flights depending on the area and the distance to Nashville or wherever they're going. Um, so that can be very challenging for us as far as when to eat, you know, can we get a safety nap in. If we have a maintenance day or a weather day, then the 24-hour shifts become very long. Uh, they become very boring. We all have assignments that we do besides transport patients, but you can't do that for 24 hours straight. So that is also a challenge. Is there's never a, you know, a, a fine line or a balance between the two. It's either or. So I think as time has gone by, there are more women, and it's probably equal now, but back when I started, and I'm sure before that, it was a male-dominated part of nursing. Um, I don't know if it was just a stigma, um, you know, women are smaller, they actually get around the aircraft better than a lot of our bigger guys. <laughs> so I'm not sure why that occurred, but right now, over the last few years, well, several years, it's, a, it's about half and half. Um, you run into problems sometimes with the 24-hour shifts. If you're a young mother and have young children, then 24-hour shifts can be very difficult for you and your family. Um, so you'll see a lot of older people come in with older children. Um, we do have younger people that fly, or crew members that fly pregnant and then have their babies and then come back. Um, kudos to them. I don't know that I could have done that, but they're brave souls. Well, I'm Canadian, so 
um, non-hostile. My dad moved us all down here. He's a physician. He's retired now. He moved us all down here because of socialized medicine and U.S. was recruiting heavy back then. Um, so I actually live in Kentucky. I live in a little town called Gracie. It's between Hopkinsville and Cadiz. My dad lives in Cadiz and all my family all around there. I love Clarksville. I actually, until I moved home to be closer to my dad because he fell ill, actually lived in Clarksville. So I love Clarksville, love the restaurants, love the people. It's an awesome town. My youngest daughter is an emergency room nurse as well, and she did have the opportunity to do a ride along with us one day, and she flew with me. Um, it was for about a period of eight hours, and we actually came, had this transport that was, was a very critical scene flight, so no hospital care yet, so we initiated care for this patient, um, and the patient was very sick. Um, I don't think I've ever seen her eyes so wide before my life. She really didn't expect what she saw. And, you know, she's lived with this all her life and heard me tell stories about the helicopter and things like that. So that was a real eye opening for her. A lot of people thank us for what we do and they call us heroes, but really to us, we're not heroes. This is our job. This was what we're trained to do. And to be blessed to have someone invite you into their life at their most difficult time in their life. And to see them, to make sure they get to the hospital safely and to initiate care on them is really a blessing. For those that we do see after transports, after they're been cured, then it's really a, a thing that we don't encounter a lot. Usually we transport the patient we have our 25 minutes with them, and then they go off. So we're just a small portion in this traumatic event that's happened to them in their life. Um, and to be able to help someone survive or make them feel better in their time of need is definitely a blessing from God. I mean, I'm so happy that I was chosen to do this profession. For current and exclusive content, subscribe to CDE Lightband, connecting you at the speed of light.